Now, there's a question that bothers me that I'm trying to understand. I have many theories on why it is like that, but let me define the problem first. If you pay attention to architecture in any sci-fi movie that represents the future world or an imaginary world, one thing often prevails. The naturality and the complexity of the form. Now here is the problem. You have seen buildings by Zaha Hadid or Frank Gehry that are built these days or even 20 years ago. Now you may be one of those people that consider that aesthetically ugly. Or you may be one of those people that think those buildings are too expensive to build. If you're in the second group, you're wrong. My whole work consists of developing methods for automated generation and production of architectural elements. Talking about how the price for building a box or a sculpture can be almost the same nowadays. And the same in the future if we keep working on it. Now I explain that in more detail here. My experience shows that 99% of architectural offices still design boxes and boxes and boxes. So are we wrong about the future or are we too slow? Do we not know we can do this today or do we not want to? Are we afraid? As far as the aesthetics go, I'm not saying freeform architecture is better. But I will ask you two questions. Does freeform make sense? Now, why do we build shelters and what do we want from them? We want to protect ourselves from nature and its conditions that don't suit us. Too warm, too cold, rain, snow, wind, etc. At some point we realize that we can do much more than just protect ourselves. We can use the warmth and the water and the wind. By smart planning we can save on materials, save on energy, enjoy the space by merging our ar architecture with nature. But let me ask you something. Does sun move in a straight line? Does wind do 90 degree turns very often? Are the views we like to enjoy flat and framed, or do they flow in front of our eyes? How about the movement of people? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? But if you have a million people and million distances, is forcing them all along a couple of straight lines the proper way? Crowd simulations show the complexity of movement and needs. And not to mention that the curved path offers the change of perspective and makes the journey much more enjoyable. Something used very often in landscape architecture something that makes all cities so organic, natural and enjoyable. Am I saying that all architecture should be free form? Of course not. I would never change Mies van der Rohe's pavilion or bend the streets of Barcelona. I'm just surprised by overwhelming domination of boxes and wonder if that makes sense. Which brings me to the second question. Where is the challenge? Shouldn't we as humans always try to build and create at the edge of our capabilities and not deep within our comfort zone? Isn't that there what drives our evolution forward? Buckminster Fuller recognized that architects are often late and use the tools developed by mechanical and electrical engineers years and years later. The proof of that is that we are now starting to use robots that have been in the machine industry for decades. But can we speed this up, please? The whole world is flocking to Barcelona to see Sagrada Familia. But do they know we can build buildings like that today relatively cheaply, using algorithms to automate every step of the design and fabrication process? Yes, some steps are not easily solvable yet, but how are we going to solve them? Not by hiding ourselves in the comfort zone. We cannot talk about aesthetics that easily. You might like how Corbusier imagined our cities. You might hate it and agree with Frank Lloyd Wright. Or you enjoy old organic cities. But I am not addressing that. I'm only asking where is the challenge? Can I make a city that uses the sunlight optimally? Can I make a building that follows the natural surroundings and enables every apartment to have an optimal view? I can make algorithms that can answer those questions for me. We can look at nature and see incredible, intricate, wonderful structures. And we can do the same, sometimes better. But we choose not to. Why? We can fly for thousands of miles to see beautiful ceilings. But today when we can do the same with the use of CNC fabrication, we choose not to. Why? There is much more to explore. How about transformers houses? Houses that move, change, adapt. How about smart houses that twist and rotate and adjust to the climate, weather or your mood? How about facades conflated with structure, skins that can breathe? How about efficient houses with optimal stability and optimal use of energy? How about cheap prefabricated houses that are all unique and adapted to the needs of the user? How about integrated system of energy production into the building, water, wind, solar power? Tourism in Bilbao increased 2500% after the museum by Frank Gehry was completed. Mark Kushner in his TED talk says, 
Buildings will twist to the whim of nature instead of the other way around. This is year 2016. According to science fiction movies, we should either be in a post-apocalyptic wasteland or live on some colony on Mars. But no, we're just a bunch of money-hungry, inconsiderate jerks here on Earth. And we don't care enough about sustainability of our cities and buildings. We don't care enough about the quality of our habitat or people that do not have one. Now we can improve this by intelligent planning, smart algorithms and eventually digital fabrication. You just have to get out of your business as usual comfort zone. Try something new, accept the challenge and we can design freely and responsibly as nature does. Not imitate it, not fake it, but understand its principles and its questions so we as architects can give an adequate, truthful answer. And from this truth, rightness will emerge and the right and the good will be beautiful and beauty will maybe save the world. What I'm asking is where is the challenge?